Hi, my name is Steve Podrachik. This is a preview for FlyQ EFB version 4.5. So let's talk about what we're trying to achieve with FlyQ EFB 4.5. The objectives are pretty straightforward. Number one, we want to dramatically improve the pre-flight planning ability, in particular as it relates to weather. We want to dramatically improve in-flight safety, again, as it, uh, in particular as it affects weather. To do that, we plan to take advantage of all of the available weather that we can get, whether the source of the weather is from uh, ADSB, including many of the FAA's new data products that they now transmit on the ADSB feed, and weather products that we can get on the internet. For example, one of the things we're doing in this release is we're switching the weather provider that we use right now to something else, to someone else. The key objective though, and this is a little bit more subtle and you're, you may not get the impression of this totally from the demo today, but one of the key points here is to make sure that the system works appropriately, efficiently and effectively in both pre-flight mode and uh, once you're actually flying the plane. Meaning there's, a, for example, there's a lot of things that you'll see on the screen. If you take a look at the screenshot, clearly we're doing a lot of things, adding toolbars and timelines and things like that. Um, a lot of that would be total noise and inconvenient to have on the screen if you are flying an airplane, uh, to have it on the screen all the time. But if you're doing pre-flight planning, you probably want that kind of stuff. So the system has to adapt quite a bit to whether or not you're flying or whether you're doing pre-flight planning sitting at your desk. And you will see some of that today. So what are the particular features that go into FlyQEFB 4.5? The biggest, most obvious change, or I don't know, maybe not one of the most obvious changes, is that the number of weather layers in FlyQ increases from seven in the current version of the product by three times to go up to 21 weather layers. Uh, on the screen, there is a screenshot of the pop-up, um, which is not going to be the one you see today, by the way, in the demo. This is uh, the final version will look more like this. The one in the demo has more of a functional, less... Um, complete version, but you'll see that. The point basically being that the number of products increases very dramatically, so you get a lot of new weather products that I'll talk about in a second. We're also adding a timeline on the bottom of the screen. The timeline is extraordinarily useful because it means we can take a look at weather both in the past to see how things have been changing up to the current time, and in the case of many of the weather products, uh, such as uh, Tafts and METARs, Winds Aloft, and radar, you'll be able to move this the timeline forward into the future to get predictive weather of what the weather is going to be like during various points in your flight. The altitude slider is another incredibly important part to this. The altitude slider um, will let you, when you're doing pre-flight planning, see what the winds are like at different altitudes, but not just the winds. It will also affect many of the other weather layers that you'll see in the product today too, especially things like icing, turbulence, uh, cloud tops, that kind of thing. So the uh, altitude slider here is going to be a very, very integral part of the features that you see here today. By the way, it does adapt also automatically to the kind of plane that you fly. For example, if you're flying say 172 that has a service ceiling of let's say 12,000 feet, you're not going to have a, a altitude bar that goes up to 53,000 feet. That's just a waste of space and silly. And so you'll be able to say, this is the kind of plane I have. I don't want the altitude to go past maybe 12, 15, 18,000, whatever it may be. And the other uh, major feature here, is, as I said, is that we're uh, adapting all of the new weather products that the FAA is producing. So you get a much higher degree of um, weather accuracy while you're flying the plane, not just while you're doing pre-flight planning and connected to powerful internet weather. So let's talk about layers. What we're doing is we're actually adding groups of layers. In the current version of the product, there's one, on, in the layers pop up, there's one category called weather, which has all seven weather layers in it. And that's totally fine. But in this release of the product, since we have so many different types of weather, we're breaking them into two groups. One group, um, which is more akin to what we have today, is the general weather. What does that mean? General weather is weather that covers an entire area. So you have things like radar covering the whole country, satellite, winds aloft, uh, turbulence, icing layers, that kind of thing. These are large graphical uh, layers that overlay on the map and you know, can conceivably cover either a state or a country, or for that matter, even worldwide. The other type of graphics that we have are go weather graphics are uh, airport specific weather, which really means point weather. 
for example, if you think about it, um, radar, of course, is just a blob that covers you know, the entire country. A METAR or a TAF in the current product is specific to a given airport. Similarly, um, surface winds are specific to an airport. Ceilings are specific to an airport. Visibility, precip, sky conditions, all of that is really specific to one point. Now, of course, if you have five airports in view, you have five points you're looking at, but it isn't a generalized um, shape. It isn't a generalized graphic. It's very specific data for very specific points. So we call that airport weather, and that's the second type. This lets you kind of quickly break down. Do you want to look at weather from a grand scale, uh, which is generally the general weather category, or do you want to look at very fine uh, data for a very small area, which is generally the airport weather? The third category that we added is, is simply a functional one, where we have to add one, a way of doing a timeline and altitude slider. Also, one is actually missing here. Uh, the other thing that you can, you need a way to pop up a timeline, to pop up the altitude slider. So that's why we're adding a new category called tools, which show that on the screen. But a third item not shown there is um, a weather is a graphic, which is a weather key. So it tells you what all the colors and all the symbols mean and things like that. So I won't show, be showing that in the demo today, but that is something that is definitely planned to be in the product. So when you take a look at all these colors, you can make some sense of it. So here's one. Here's the first layer I want to talk about. This is the new predictive uh, radar layer. In the current version of the product, you of course have had radar. That's an obvious thing you'd have in every uh, product that you would want to ever use on um, for EFB. But now we have a timeline down the bottom of the screen. In the currently shipping version of the product, you have the ability to do a static weather graphic or you can do an animation. The animation goes, I think it goes back about an hour or so and cycles up to the current time and it stops when it hits the current time. The thing that's new here is a predictive radar doesn't stop at the current time. You get all the past stuff, you can look at that, but you can also move it forward by about an hour to take a look at how the weather is going to change um, over the near future. Very, very powerful. So this is historical and it's forecast based on the timeline, it goes by about an hour. I did write that it is internet only. That's a little bit misleading. Obviously, if you have an ADSB receiver, you can get ADSB radar. The only difference is that you can't get the predictive portion of the radar if you're connecting to ADSB because that's simply not available in the ADSB data feed. You need to be connected to the internet to get the predictive part. Another layer that you that I think is very, very interesting is the cloud tops uh, and cloud bases layers, two different layers, but fundamentally the same, uh, like two sides of the same coin. What this does is this tells you, and this one has both a timeline component and an altitude component. What it lets you do is it uses uh, grade, um, gray shades to indicate what the cloud levels are. As you move the altitude slider up and down, what you find is that the cloud tops or the cloud bases that are not applicable at uh, that altitude disappear. So as you move the slider up and you move the slider down, you actually see these base layers appear and disappear. So you can get a really good sense if you wanted to either fly above the clouds, uh, stay lower to be below freezing levels, whatever it may be, you get a really, really good sense uh, by using a combination of the timeline and the altitude slider. This one is only available through internet. Uh, however, it's similar to the Echo Tops uh, layer, which is available only on ADSB. So there's a lot of similarity. You don't get exactly the same data if you're connected to the internet or ADSB, but it's pretty similar. Turbulence. Turbulence, uh, especially this time of year, starts to be really important. So turbulence is a forecast product. It isn't based on existing data. It's not historical. It's where turbulence is predicted. Uh, of course, you could get this in FlyQ EFB today by looking at the static graphics in the weather gallery, but with FlyQ EFB 4.5, we're aiming to do quite a bit better. So it's a forecast product, um, and you can see the colors on the screen there. The colors indicate the turbulence intensity at the selected altitude. So you move the altitude slider up and down, and you see the differences, the colors will change, uh, showing you where the turbulence is. Again, you'll see that during today's demo. Also, a uh, key point here, this is available on both the ADSB, through ADSB data feeds and through the internet, but they're gonna look a little bit different. The screenshot that you have here is what the turbulence layer looks like from the ADSB receiver. So it's kind of blocky. 
That's because ADS-B systems are relatively low resolution because they only have so much bandwidth that they can push um, into the broadcast. When you take a look at it today, it will be the one based on the internet feed, which is quite a bit more um, fine, a lot more higher resolution display. The other thing, though, is that not only is this a graphical layer that shows the areas that may have intense, may have turbulence at different intensities, we also are adding pyreps to the product for the first time. And the pyreps that you see are specific to the layer. So for example, in this screenshot's a little bit off, but uh, what this means is when you turn on the turbulence layer, you will see the pyreps, um, which are kind of the, the lines that look like, um, how can I explain it? Like a little bit of a hill, like a bump, uh, like an inverted V. Those icons will appear because those are the icons that the FA uses to indicate turbulence. You'll also notice that the icons on the screen there are color coded. Remember, fly, this is FlyQ. So green good, red bad. So a green turbulence icon means it's a light turbulence, while a red means very, very heavy turbulence, and a yellow or an orange, in this case, means that it's moderate turbulence, okay? So as always, we use a lot of colors to make things very easy to understand in FlyQ. You can also combine layers together because it's like you. Um, a lot of uh, the EFB apps out there only let you pick like one from various categories and it's very limited in what you can pick in terms of turning on weather layers. In FlyQ, we let you mix and match almost anything you want to do. So, so you can kind of get a whole, a big picture of what's going on. By combining layers together, in this case, I have the turbulence layer on and I also have the cloud levels on at the same time gives you a really good sense of where you may or may not want to fly based on both uh, the cloud level and the turbulence. You don't have to toggle between the two of them. And since these layers have to do with a timeline and an altitude slider, you can play with each of those. You can modify the altitude up a slider up to the altitudes that you're thinking about flying at. You can move the timeline to see what things will look like uh, maybe an hour or two hours, three hours into the flight. It's all there for you. Icing, another, uh, you know, as I look out the window today, it's not snowing, but it looks like it could snow at any time. And the weather is only a little bit above freezing, which is pretty cold for Seattle. So icing is on our minds and it's probably in your mind as well. Icing is a forecast product. You can get this either through ADSB uh, or the internet. And like turbulence, we add the appropriate pyreps that apply to icing. So in this case, again, you have green icons showing you where the uh, where their pirate where their pilot reports of being uh, light icing, and then pilot pilot reports where it gets a little bit more severe. Those are in orange. You can again play with the altitude slider. We can adjust the altitude slider, uh, such as to see what the icing levels are like at various altitudes. So very, very easy way to see if, you know, maybe I'm not flying a Pilatus here. Maybe I shouldn't be flying at this altitude because the uh, severity of the icing is way more than my Cessna 172 can handle. Okay? So very, very good way to analyze the data. And again, you can do this while you're flying. So as you're flying along, you can use the ADSB icing feed to see what the um, weather is going to be like, the icing will be like in particular, at different altitudes. Or you can do it for pre-flight planning. Lightning. We think the lightning display here is particularly good. What we did was uh, we get lightning feeds now from the ADSB receiver. That's one of the new products that the FA introduced recently. We also get a lightning feed from our new weather provider. In fact, we're actually getting two different data feeds from our weather provider. One of the feeds uh, shows you the traditional lightning bolts, so you see those on the screen there. But the other one, I think, is really interesting. The other one is a predictive layer. So the lightning bolts are actual lightning strikes. The predictive layer, though, uses uh, balls of color, in this case, mostly greens and blues, a little bit of red and yellow, but basically uses color blobs to give you what's called a heat map, giving you some concept of where there's a high probability or a low probability, I guess, in the case of blue, but what the probability of getting lightning strikes are in various places. So before you fly, the predictive uh, aspect to this is very, very useful. And then after you start flying, of course, seeing the actual lightning strikes um, is also very useful. When you're doing this through the ADSB system, we do not get that forecast. We don't get that heat map view. We do get the actual lightning strikes. Pyreps, I've already touched on this. Um, we have this symbology that's pretty standard for doing icing and for doing turbulence. Um, and we isolate those. So if there's an actual 
So if you have a pilot report, which is just turbulence or just icing, you see those symbols. Again, they are color-coded, green good, red bad. So the green is a very low intensity um, or urgency. Anything that's in the middle is going to be either orange or yellow. I think we picked orange for the most part here. And anything which is really severe, there's nothing like that on the screen right now, would be bright red. Or you'd also get them bright red if they were marked as urgent. When you make a pyre up, you can, of course, mark it as urgent. So even if it's only, say, moderate icing, if it's really urgent, you feel, it can be marked that way. And you would uh, see the symbol for moderate icing in red um, because it's marked as urgent. You also see a number of blue icons on the screen that look like bullhorn. What are those? If there's a pirate, if there's a pilot report or an air up which uh, has both icing and turbulence in it, or maybe has neither, it's just recording sky conditions, something like that. Um, that doesn't really fit into the two general boxes of icing and turbulence. So we use a third icon, which simply looks like a bullhorn, telling you there is something here. You should probably tap on it to read it. All of these can be tapped on and be read, and I'll do that during the demo today. Freezing level is another, um, we think, particularly interesting layer. What we do here is there's a timeline down the bottom of the screen, and you can use the timeline to show where the freezing level is expected to be at various points in the future. Very, very powerful, and we color code it. So if the freezing level is very low, then of course we will mark it as red. If the freezing level is a bit higher, it'll probably just be black, and if the freezing level is very high, such that um, from a practical point of view, you don't even really worry about it, then the freezing level will be marked as green, okay? So the freezing level layer, another one that went into the product. Finally, I think this is the last one um, on the layers, we have a surface analysis product. Like a lot of the other layers in FlyQ, you've had the ability to look at a static graphic showing you surface analysis um, that uh, the National Weather Service produces. And that's great, but it is a static graphic and it's not on the main map. Now it's on the main map. So now you can even take the timeline, move the timeline to different portions of the future and see where the highs and the lows are going. So you can do a good job predicting uh, what the winds are going to be like, what the turbulence may be like, icing and so on. So very, very powerful feature, uh, surface analysis on the map. And again, you'll see that during the demo in just a couple of minutes. We also have, now those were all in the general category. Those were the general products that you see covering wide areas. The, we also though, as I said, have a whole category of airport-based weather graphics. In fact, we have eight of them. In the current version of the product, there's one. There's METAR and TAF. Now we have METAR and TAF. We have uh, things like surface winds, which is I think a huge one. We have uh, what the weather conditions are like, sky conditions are like what the precip, temperature, and so on. Lots more layers. Now, you can either show them all at once, and I'll show you how to do that in just a second, or you can tap on particular layers. Like for example, say that you were looking for, um, say that the weather conditions were kind of bad and there's snow on the ground somewhere. So you want to find um, in a given area, you, you want to take off from an Orlando an airport that maybe doesn't have snow at the time. You can turn on just the, um, the precipitation layer and the precipitation layer will apply to all the airports in the area. On the other hand, you can also do what we call a press and hold, a long press on a particular airport and you see all the weather layers for the, just, just that airport show up briefly, tap off and they go away. Let me show you what I mean by that. So let's say that we're looking at this airport, it's my home airport, and I see a green icon telling me that the weather conditions are in fact VFR as per normal fly queue. But if I want to see more details, all that I do is I press and hold, and this is what you get. You get a weather overlay that shows you the surface winds, which are green, meaning light. So, but the 10 in the middle tells you that the surface winds are in fact 10 knots hitting more or less to the east. Then you see a series of other icons that give you different elements of a METAR or a TAF. For example, uh, just starting at the 12 o'clock position, you have a snowflake and it's orange. That means that obviously there's snow going on, Orange, remember in FlyQ means moderate, so you have a, a medium amount of snow going on. If that were green, it would be light snow. If it were red, it would be a blizzard, basically. Moving clockwise around, the next icon there is red, and it's an eyeball with a two in it. What does an eyeball mean? Well, visibility, of course. So that means that the visibility is red um, because it's only two nautical miles, so very, very low visibility in that area. 
continuing clockwise to about the five o'clock position is the dew point spread icon. So the dew point there um, is uh, marked as negative three. So it's relatively low gap between uh, what the temperature is and what the dew point is. So if you just want to see what the dew point spread is like, you can put it on that layer. As opposed to the blue one at the seven o'clock position, the blue one, uh, the icon there is actually a little bit off. We've changed it since. The icon there uh, will actually have two different numbers on it. The top number will be the temperature. The bottom number is a dew point. That one, by the way, you notice is blue, which we haven't really seen here before. Why is it blue? Well, because if the uh, current temperature is below freezing, we're going to use blue because you know blue supposedly looks like ice. Other than that, you, you'll see the normal green, orange, and red there. The final icon at about the 10 o'clock position is the one that sky conditions. So now we know since it's three quarter, we're actually going to invert the colors here. Uh, so it's a little bit different, but basically this means it's three quarter occluded or in other words, broken cloud layer. If there were one pie wedge on the right side, that would mean that it's scattered cloud layers um, and so on. You get the idea. So um, that's what the new weather layers look like. You can turn this, um, you have an option to show these or not. If you think this gets in your way, you don't have to use this feature. But the general idea is when you're looking at a ta uh, TAF or a METAR, which remember there's a timeline down the bottom. So you can now use the timeline to move ahead from the TAF time period, sorry, from the METAR time period to forward to the TAF period. And then if you wanna see more details, you just press and hold for a moment on top of it pops up the more detail, tap anywhere off on the map, and all of these icons disappear. You'll see, um, you won't see this in the demo today, it's not quite ready yet, um, but that's how it works. And of course, this feature works whether you're looking at weather which comes from an ADS-B receiver or from the internet. And at this point, how about a demo? Let's take a look. So let me minimize my screen here, and I will pull up my iPad. All right, so, as we've done with all the demos that we've done here today, uh, the way that I think I want to begin is by clicking on FlyQ EFB itself. Again, remember that FlyQ, there are two different versions of FlyQ. There's an orange icon, which is FlyQ Insight. This is our product that does augmented reality, hence the name Insight. Um, and it does uh, a little bit of weather information, airports, and flight planning. It has no moving map. The product we're talking about today, though, of course, is the magenta icon, which is FlyQ EFB. So let's launch that uh, version 4.5 now. By the way, if you saw this, we've given this demo twice previously. If you saw the previous two and you're looking at this one, you will notice that the mapping system is dramatically faster here uh, because I was able to use a little bit later build that the developers were making for me, which is much faster. Anyway, let's turn on some weather layers. So one thing, again, I wanna point to, I'm gonna tap the layers box, uh, which is the stack of papers icon on the left hand side of the screen. This does not look like the graphic that you saw in the presentation a little while ago, because this is kind of a working model for the developers. So the weather layers are just kind of scattered in no uh, real, particularly a good location. Don't worry about that. They will be organized in the final product uh, the way that it was on the slide that you saw earlier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some of these weather layers, just kind of going sequentially in order. The first one I want to show you is, um, towards the bottom of the other category, two up from the top, this is Pyreps. So I'm gonna turn on the Pyreps. Looks like there's one here. Move the mapping system out like this. Okay, so again, what does this really mean? This means a couple of things. Um, it means that you've got green icons, which means low in general. So towards the middle of, uh, I guess that's what, Montana or something, you have a number of icons that are green icons that are low intensity turbulence only one bar and they're green. As you move back into the eastern part of Washington state, you begin to see uh, a green icing layer over there. You also have a number of icons that are blue. The blue icons are the ones that are kind of generic. Now, if you tap on any of these, let's say you wanna tap on the one that's orange because the moderate, this means moderate turbulence in the middle of the screen. So I am kind of interested in that. So let's see what we got there. Gonna zoom in and tap on it. So it tells you, up. Oh, looks like we have some chop, it's a PIRAP, the source is from the internet, it's turbulence, moderate conditions, and so on. You also get the full text down below if you want to read that. We'll probably make that text uh, quite a bit bigger too, by the way, in the final product. But the point is that you can tap on any of these and see details. Like if I tap on, we have a lot of them in this area. So let me tap on one 
the one that's closest to the middle of the screen here and see what we got. So not a lot of information there. Basically, someone's just reporting what the cloud tops are. So that's how we do the PyRepps. And remember that the PyRep layer also, I'm going to turn it off now. The PyRep layer also selectively turns on automatically uh, when you use either the turbulence or the icing layer. So the PyRep layer was on the left-hand side of the screen. I'm going to back up the map a little bit here to kind of a national map. In fact, I'm going to, uh, just for fun, I'm going to turn on the aerial map, kind of the uh, big graphic of the country and so on. No, actually, let's go with the road map and put that on the screen. Okay, now I'm going to turn on the surface analysis layer. So that happens to be at the bottom left side. Again, don't pay any attention to the position of the icons. This is uh, menu items. This is not what they'll be in the final product. So it takes a second for it to get to the right size. You just have to bear with it for just a moment here. But there it is. So now you can see what the weather layers are going to look like, like that. You see where the lows are, where the highs are for the nation, right there, right on the screen for you. And of course, you can mix and max that. So if you want to uh, put the pyreps on the screen, you can do that as well. If you want to put on, um, I don't know, just something unrelated to that, maybe fuel prices. I mean, whatever you feel like, you can totally mix and match uh, the different layers together like that. Because again, that's what FlyQ does. It lets you mix and match various layers. So let's take the fuel prices off. And after surface analysis, let's go back to kind of the national level here and take a look at what the radar looks like, the predictive radar. All right, so notice the timeline appeared down the bottom of the screen here. So I'm going to back up a little bit and see where some bad weather is. All right. So it looks like over, uh, it looks like in Texas and uh, in the Gulf states, it looks like the weather is not particularly great right now. Now, notice that the timeline down the bottom is pointing approximately at the current time. It goes in hour increments. So we're looking at 11 o'clock. Uh, so this is essentially real time. Let's say I move this a little bit in the past. You get something like that. And if I move the timeline a little bit into the future, you see the predictive part to it. You see things start to move. So at this time, at 11 o'clock, it moves a little bit forward that way. It's subtle because it is only an hour. In fact, maybe I can do this. Let's zoom in a little bit more. So at 11 o'clock, uh, it looks like the radar is showing that the storms are a little bit offshore. If we move to a little bit later time, you see that it's moved a little bit, okay? So that's the thing about the predictive radar. Very, very cool system. As far as I know, we're the only product out there that has predictive radar. Um, so you, in addition to the predictive radar, you can also go to the animated radar and see an animation of where the weather has been for the last few minutes. So you can look at either one of those at the same time, or rather either one of those, not both of them at the same time. So animated radar is available past-based radar based on the timeline, and forward-looking predictive radar also available. And of course, again, you can mix and match that. I'm gonna turn off the radar layer. One change that we did make in this product where we took away a weather layer, which sounds a little weird, is below the radar, um, we have satellite IR and satellite VIS, satellite visible. In the currently shipping version of the product, you have to select which one you want. The satellite visible layer is great, unless it's at night. If it's at night, it really means visible. So the satellite isn't picking up any optical sense of where the clouds are. Hence, you use an IR at night. In the new version of the satellite layer, there's only one satellite layer because it dynamically merges uh, IR and visible. So it works equally well, whether you're in, uh, in the daytime or at night. Very, very slick. Let's talk about how, um, how the timeline works too a little bit. So I'm going to back up the map a little bit. I'm going to turn on the METAR layer, which is actually the METAR and TAF layer. Give it a second for that to show up. Okay, so as one might expect, uh, given what the weather conditions in that area look like, there's a lot of colored dots on the screen. This is the colored dots at the current time. Again, as in general with FlyQ, green is good, red is bad. So the green dot towards the middle of the screen is VFR conditions. If I tap on that, I can see that. Yep, VFR. 
while the red ones, uh, which is interesting, the red ones next to it mean that they have IFR conditions. And then kind of to the left-hand side of the green dot, you see a lot of yellows, and the yellows are marginal VFR. Now, again, this has to do with the timeline. So if you look down to the timeline, it's looking at 11 o'clock uh, Pacific time. So these are METARs. As I move this forward, I'm going to move this to maybe 1 p.m. Notice a lot of things just happened. First of all, most of the dots went away. I'm going to go back to 11 o'clock. We have a lot of colored METAR dots on the screen now. And when I move it to 12 o'clock, most of them go away. Why is that? That's not a bug. That's the way it's supposed to work. Because when you look, remember that the name of the layer is METAR slash TAF. We combine them together so you don't have to really think about it. What that means is that when you are at 11 o'clock, you're looking at all the METARs which are being reported, most of them by automated weather reporting stations. So many, many, many more airports have a METAR than have a TAF. So when you begin to move it forward to say 1 p.m., you're only looking at the airports that have TAFs. By the way, if you tap on them now, um, you can see that, that here's a TAF. Oh, look, it's IFR conditions. While, um, yeah, uh, see, one that changed, I believe, was this one right here. So in this case, the, the METAR is showing VFR, but if you take a look at, right, at the TAFs, it's showing a little later in the day, you're definitely seeing IFR conditions. So again, if I move the, if you take a look at the dot below the letter E, I believe that one will change at 11 o'clock, right? So at, at 11 o'clock, it's green. At one o'clock, it's red. So you can imagine, let's say that you had a flight on the screen here. So unfortunately, this isn't the right area of the country, but it will still serve the purpose. So imagine that you had a flight on the screen and you want to see what the weather conditions will be like uh, when you begin flying. Like, uh, let's say that's right now versus at one o'clock. A couple of changes. Notice that the weather is actually getting a little bit better in the Seattle area. I'm going to move, I'm using the simulator built into the product right now. Okay, so as you're flying along here, you take a look, there's a, a green dot um, a little bit below and to the right of Tacoma at the current time. At one o'clock, we see more greens, more yellows, and fewer reds. So it looks like the weather conditions are getting a little bit better as the day continues. Very, very powerful feature built into the product. And again, this works uh, whether you're on the internet or through ADSB. Similarly, uh, we made a lot of changes to winds aloft. So I'm going to back up the map here, and let's take a look at Winds Aloft. Winds Aloft is the first layer that we've looked at that has not just a timeline down the bottom, but has an altitude slider as well. Now, the system is set up for in-flight use at this point because it thinks we're flying. So it made the altitude slider go away because it kind of gets in the way. To get it back, I tap on the WX Alt in the corner here, and I bring my slider back. I can position this to whatever time and altitude I like. So for example, at 8,000 feet or at 10,000 feet or at 14,000, it looks like that. Let's bring it back down to 2,000. When you bring it back down to 2,000, you mostly see green. Green means that the winds are 20 knots or below. Orange means that they're between 20 and 50. And reds, which are not visible at uh, 2,000 feet. Again, if the timeline goes away, look in the right corner of the screen. It says WX Alt. So you always know what altitude it's looking at. Uh, it simply doesn't bother taking up all that space for the slider itself. If you want to see the slider come back, since uh, WX Alt 2000 in the corner, right corner of the screen is blue, just like anything else in FlyQ, that means you can tap on it and bring it back. So let's say we want to see what the weather is now like at 14,000. The weather conditions changed a lot. And as we move up to 18 or 20, you see a lot of arrows on the screen that are bright red, which isn't surprising, of course, at that altitude. But that's at an altitude. You can also, let's say that we keep this at maybe 8,000 feet. Let's see how the winds are going to change. Winds are actually a predictive product. Um, I think a lot of people think that when you use an ADSB receiver or maybe XM or something, that you're seeing actual wind data. You're not. You're simply seeing predictive wind data at various times. So in this case, let's move our timeline to our current time to 11 o'clock down the bottom of the screen. And let's try moving it forward to see how it will change. So at one o'clock, you see some changes. At three o'clock, about the same. Five, eight, maybe at 10 o'clock, they start to change even more. So really in this particular case, probably not massive changes. Again, at, at 11 o'clock, but you see a lot of uh, greens, 
going on the upside. Uh, when you take a look towards the bottom of the screen, a lot of green arrows hitting more or less up, and you can clearly see the orange arrows swirling around uh, towards the top. If you move the timeline on that, it looks like it's getting a bit more jumbled on the green, green stuff down the bottom. And then as you move it towards 10 o'clock, it's actually kind of reversed itself, where most of the winds are now hitting to the south, where, again, at 11 o'clock, you had a lot of winds towards the bottom of the screen that were heading to the north. So by combining both the altitude slider and the timeline, you have really unprecedented views on how the winds are going to look. And remember, you can combine this together with other layers because it's FlyCube. So you can do things like, um, I do already have the METAR layer on. Let's say we zoom in a little bit so you can see the METARs. So you can start to see that. So you can look at the colored dots representing the METARs at the same time that you can look at the altitude or uh, look at the winds aloft at these various altitudes. So like 4,000, everything's better. All right, so that's a great way of looking at um, having multiple uh, things on the screen at the same time. By the way, if you're not familiar with FlyQ's winds aloft, uh, what we're showing here is a little different than most other products. The winds aloft in FlyQ um, are arrows pointing in the direction that the wind is going. So it's kind of the human thing. So if you look at the middle of the screen there, you see a dot that says eight. That means it's an eight knot wind. It's green, so you know that the speed is below 20. But then the arrow is pointing to, well, it's pointing to about five o'clock or so. So the, it's pointing to the southeast, meaning that the winds are coming from the northwest going to the southeast. Uh, we don't use wind barbs, so just a little easier to understand. Okay, other layers to look at. Uh, we talked about um, in the future, not in this release, uh, sorry, not in this beta, you'll also be able to use the, t the timeline on the AirMed SigMed layer to move the timeline forward so that you will actually be able to see uh, which uh, AirMets and SigMets are available at different times. That doesn't uh, quite work yet, so I can't show that to you. Let's talk about some of the other layers, though. One of the most uh, anticipated layer, I think, that people want, uh, let's try moving to an IFR low chart just for fun, is lightning strikes. So I'm going to maybe move my map. I think we have some lightning strikes in the lower part of the country. So I'm going to hit the layers, and lightning happens to be currently on the lower right side of the screen. Again, these are not the location in the final product. I'll turn on lightning, and boom. Now, what you're looking at there, it kind of looks like, uh, I like to describe this as like a meteor hitting the Earth from space. That's kind of what it looks like to me, or a lightning bolt from the heavens. You've got what Zeus or Thor or somebody uh, shooting a lightning bolt down. This is the predictive stuff. So I'm going to move that into the middle of the screen. And those colored blotches tell us what the probability is of seeing lightning in these various spots. Let's maybe go back to the road layer so we can see where we are. So it looks like, not surprisingly, this is Louisiana or Houston. And I bet if we turn on the radar, yeah, what do you know? OK, high degree of overlap between the radar layer and uh, what you're looking at on the um, uh, and looking at the lightning layers. So not really surprising that those two combine. But you can also see, as you start to zoom into this, this is a heat map. Oh, I have the METAR layer on, too. So it probably won't be that surprising to see that you're going to see bad weather conditions. Uh, you see some reds and yellows where there are predicted to be strikes from lightning. Now, at the, with the build that I'm using right now in the product, you don't see the lightning bolts for the actual strikes. You'll see that... Um, in all likelihood, you'll probably see that if you take a look at the demos we do on Monday or Tuesday, because the development team's working on that right now. If you're using the ADS-B display, you would see lightning strikes in the product right now. Okay, So that's a lightning feature in the product. We also have cloud tops. That is one which does require ADS-B, so I won't select that. But let's talk about turbulence. So the turbulence layer is a layer that I think is best viewed from a distance. All right, so turbulence is something which has to do both with altitude and uh, time on here. It is a uh, predictive layer, or sorry, no, this one's not predictive, icing is predictive. But notice what we do here is we have the colors which show you the intensity level of the turbulence, and we're also adding in pyreps that are uh, specific to turbulence. So anything there on the screen, any of those icons there, means that there's something to do with turbulence. So, not really surprisingly, you see a lot of orange, moderate, pyreps 
from the place where you see the um, yellow areas saying that there is in fact turbulence there. You do also see some reports of turbulence, which is interesting, in places that you don't actually see them being predicted. This is the difference between the shaded areas are predicted areas versus the PIREPs themselves are telling you where pilots are actually reporting them. So it's very useful that both the PIREP portion and the um, predictive part go onto the screen at the same time. One last layer to look at, I'm gonna turn off turbulence and turn on icing. So with the icing layer, this takes it a second to materialize on the screen. But again, you're noticing that you have the PIREPs that are specific to icing on the screen. And also notice that the altitude slider came alive. So I can take a look at what the icing is like at different altitudes. So this is icing at 6,000, icing at 12,000, icing at 18, or maybe icing at only 2,000. So it looks like, not surprisingly, you have less icing, duh, um, at lower altitudes. As you start to move up, the icing becomes more relevant. And this is a predictive layer too, I believe. So, you, oh, sorry, uh, it's, the predictive part isn't implemented quite yet. But you'll be able to also move the timeline and see where this stuff is predicted. So much like winds aloft, you'll be able to look at where the icing is expected to be at different altitudes and at different times. Okay, and again, you can overlay things. So in this case, I think, um, let's take turbulence, for example. You can put turbulence and icing on the screen at the same time and see places where you definitely don't want to fly. <laughs> There's both icing and turbulence. That's kind of a, a no-go decision to me. I'm going to turn off the turbulence, or let's put turbulence on, but I can turn on winds aloft. So you can really start to see where things are going, too. So not surprisingly, if you take a look at the turbulence areas, uh, where turbulence is colored, you also see a lot of orange arrow, wind arrows. So what a surprise. Where the winds are stronger is where you get turbulence. Okay. So there's a lot to this product. Um, if you're trying to do weather analysis either before you fly or while you're in flight, uh, th this is a night and day difference. I mean, this is better weather than I believe any other ADS, any other EFB product has and something that we really believe accomplishes our two objectives. One is to, to make your pre-flight planning much easier, much more effective, and to make your in-flight use much safer because you can use timelines and altitude sliders to see how the weather will, will change during your flight and at different altitudes. We really think this is gonna really help people, especially in the winter time. So that's what's new in FlyQ EFB 4.5, except for one other little uh, magical feature. I'm going to turn off the weather layers, the METARs, the TAFs, the winds aloft, and is anybody a VFR pilot? I am, so if, if you are, raise your hand. Be proud to be VFR. And if you're a VFR pilot, you're gonna like this other new feature we added. Inside layers, we have the new flyway charts also. So now, if you are flying in the Seattle area, if you're flying in California, wherever it may be, you now have those charts. I'm gonna go back up to the top here and go up to Seattle. So you can see that your position is in fact superimposed on the new VFR uh, flyway charts. If you wanna get rid of the chart, it's simple enough. You tap on layers again, turn off flyway charts, and it goes away. So it just sits on top of a sectional or an IFR chart. Anyway, that is what I've got for FlyQ EFB 4.5. Hope you've appreciated today's demo. I'm very, very appreciative of you having joined us here today.